Welcome to Renaissance City, a Prowlers and Paragons actual play produced by TTRP Theater. I am Duke Walter, your Game Master. Myself and a group of friends have come together to spin some tales, have some laughs, and hopefully entertain you with our stories of superheroes. The Prowlers and Paragons system is a rules-light role-playing game that allows us to live out the fantasy of being the heroes and villains. Saint Shadow is played by Jazz Abramowitz. The Scarlet Spartan is Dean Martin Jr. Cotton Dearborn, and King are played by Chris Freedom. TTRP Theater is a group of actors, artists, and gamers from all walks of life that collaborate to bring you compelling content. We are a diverse group that loves playing a diverse set of games in a diverse set of styles. We have created a community for all people to come together and help us tell stories that we can all be proud of. Be sure to visit ttrptheater.com for all of our content. Okay, let's get into the show. There's an op-ed in today's Detroit Free Press. It's titled, Is Anywhere in Detroit Safe? Raymond Bernstein was murdered in his own home. The brutal killing of a man working for the betterment of all people in Renaissance City is not only tragic, but frightening. Raymond Bernstein is one more in a line of people in Detroit showing up dead in recent weeks, seemingly at the hands of the powered people that have taken up here in Renaissance City. The brutality, the blatant disregard for the laws and people of our great city, and the terror these acts of violence are meant to cause will not go without consequences. I am calling for these so-called heroes to step into the light, but my calls continue to fall on deaf ears. These vigilantes destroy public and private property with little to no regard for the citizens we have sworn to protect. They take the law into their own hands, acting as judge, jury, and executioner, but they are not above the law. I am announcing today an initiative to begin bringing these powered people to justice. With the help and funding from William C. Durant, Henry Ford, Lawton Whitingale, the Livingston Trust, and the Bernstein Brothers, Renaissance City is forming a task force under the control of our newly appointed commissioner of the Vigilante Board, Alexander Griffin. Guided Urban Attendant Renaissance Defense known as Guard, are being deployed to the streets of our fair city. These units have been engineered to deal with these perpetrators in ways that our police force has been unable to up to this point. We have also started construction on a facility to jail these powered individuals once they are apprehended to ensure that our streets are made safe, letting the good people of Renaissance City sleep better at night, knowing that these murderers are off the streets. These are trying times. Know that we are going to see this through and make you, the citizens of Detroit, safe again. Signed, Mayor F.E. Doramus. Dude. Raymond. <laughs> um, I'm not sure we should be hanging out. You're bright red. Yeah, they word it like that. It really sounds bad, doesn't it? It kind of does. How are we going to keep you on the low? Was it Raymond that murdered um, Bernstein? It's Raymond that's red. I, I didn't get Bernstein. Raymond is red. That's all I'm saying. Well, there's, we got to hide out. And to be clear, I have no idea who killed Bernstein. Shadow told Cotton that King oh, he did. killed Raymond Bernstein in Bloodlust. I didn't remember that. So now they're their attendant army is justified to fight against us. This is why I normally work with professionals. I want to jump back. Like, 
Saint Shadow, you portray yourself as somebody who doesn't kill. You know, it wasn't that long ago that you were on the steps of a bank and you were throwing knives into the necks of humanoids that you thought were humans and freely killing just because you happened to get lucky and they were attendants doesn't mean you still don't have a little murderer in you, buddy. I knew that they weren't people. Not when you threw those knives, you didn't. Oh, yeah, I knew. You did? Trust, okay. Trust me, Got it. I knew. <laughs> right. <laughs> I knew the whole time. Sure. Uh huh. I do my research. Okay? Right. <laughs> I'm a professional. I know what I'm getting into. That's good to know. I am a little surprised, actually, that some of my contacts didn't give me a heads up on this. It was inevitable. And it makes me wonder how many bridges may have been burned at this point. Lawton is with them. Yeah. Shadow, do you have any cops? I mean, are you in with any police? Nobody at an influential level. Some lower level guys to pay off for information. It's about the extent of it. Should we just turn ourselves in? I mean, maybe you should. I feel like you should. (laughs) I feel like you should. (laughs) And then we'll have a guy on the inside. That'll be helpful. Raymond takes the fall. Yeah. Listen, uh, people don't um, don't know who Cotton is. Uh, They only know King. And uh, believe it or not, I, I can take off this outfit and people don't know that I'm Saint Shadow. You, on the other hand, are sort of hard to miss. You know, I have to put on a put on a hat. You have a good hat for this. Kick my uh, collar up high and put on some glasses. Nobody will ever recognize me. Hiding in plain sight. I think that's a brilliant move. I do too. We just go to the winds. Fuck it. Let's just sell this trash can, split the booty, and go to another city. He ain't kidding. <laughs> well, we murdered everybody here that we needed to. Let's uh, <laughs> let's check out Cleveland. Let's right? head for Duluth. Let's, yeah, this yeah. is too hard. I think. Uh, What's going on in Milwaukee? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> Milwaukee seems nice. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody ever been to Dallas? Actually, what we ought to do is smuggle some of these attendants out and sell this shit for cash somewhere else. We could make some money on this. Let's get back to the task at hand. You know, we can only control what we can control. We got to stay down low and out of sight as much as possible. Quit drawing attention to ourselves and uh, protect Raymond from the public eye as much as possible. Mm. Did the sable come with us? Is the sable here? No. Okay. Um, we will never see the sable again. Well, I mean, I wouldn't. I wouldn't blame them. I mean, I'm going to see him at Thanksgiving. <laughs> Actually, that's not true. That his part of the family doesn't really like me at all. I just wonder who the head of the snake is. Alexander Griffin sounds like to me. He's the mayor's right hand man. Those are powerful and influential people on that list. More so than him. Yeah. Henry Ford? But Griffin's in charge of the guard unit. Lawton Whitingale? Lawton is a financier, along with Ford. Who else? I don't believe it's Ford. That just doesn't Henry Ford. calculate to me. Fellas, we need some magnets. That's all there is to it. <laughs> <laughs> they use these attendants to rob a bank right and now they've got an army on the street the people are begging them for well let's be clear i don't know necessarily that the people are begging for this just because a group of 10 moneyed people who could all be in cahoots want this to happen right. doesn't mean that the general populace does 
Right. So if that's the case, where do you go to hide? Or who do we take hostage? <laughs> that's that's much more um that's much more on brand for you. Yes. Well, were we talking about taking the mayor hostage last time? Yes. Yeah, I think so. I think it might have been a good move. He wouldn't have been able to write this letter if we just taken him hostage. Right. That's <laughs> very flawed thinking, guys. I, mean, I, don't, I don't agree with that sentiment. No, just kill your way through it. It'll be fine. Yeah. It's true. It's a good idea. <laughs> Everything was fucking fine until we took some time off and let Duke think. This is bullshit. No, 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 no. I had this written a long time ago. <laughs> you know what that list of names is? Ramen? Shadow? Yeah. Yeah. Future body count. Fuck these guys. I, Start at the top. No. God damn right. I think, that's, I think that's the wrong move. Well, give us a move then, Captain Strategy Pants. Cotton, I want you to roll willpower. Oh, okay. God, he's going to start feeling good again. Got to find that number. There it is. Two. Two successes? Yeah. Do you want to change into king? No. This anger that's rising inside of you, this emotional swelling that you're feeling um, as you are going back and forth with your friends, your fellow heroes. You feel that change coming on, but you're able to hold it back. That's a new feeling for you. I'm not loving that. I'm about to go out in public. My my next strategy was for me to go out, not be recognizable, and to actually get some intel as Cotton. I could see me out in the middle of shit, turning into King. I'm just sitting here getting hot in conversation with you and I can feel King coming on right now. Feels like I'm barely holding him back. I don't want to split up because I think if those things come for us, our best chance to defend ourselves and escape is together. But that makes us more inconspicuous. Unless Shadow leaves the room. There's a phone in a separate room of the love shack okay and shadow walks over to the phone closes all the doors trying not to be heard and dials his dad's number okay shit all right operator could you please connect me with zero one two apple washington whatever it is. i don't know what how phones work back then. <laughs> no, you don't have to go through all that i was trying to come up with a i was trying to get back into lawton well, i didn't expect this phone call it's okay I was, I was trying to buy you some time ray where the fuck's he going oh uh, go to think maybe he needs to think alone take his mask off scratch his nose Dude, I'm just nervous about I'm nervous about you and and when I'm king, like we stick out like a sore thumb, man. Everybody's gonna see us. We need to go north to Canada. They have a lot of funny people up there. Fewer gun deaths. Good call. I don't think we tell Shadow. I think we just go in the dark of night. <laughs> just leave now. Let's just walk out the other way and be gone when he comes back. <laughs> That's also on brand. You guys just leave Shadow fucking <laughs> all the time. <laughs> it's just so on brand. You guys are completely predictable. I mean, to be clear, he just bailed on us. We have no idea what he's doing right now. Go get the old jalopy fired up and head on down the road. Go stop by Bonnie's, get some coffee with cream. I'm thinking a car with no bullet holes in it. It's probably advisable. I think the only appropriate thing, Raymond, is for you to just ride in the trunk everywhere. Right. That's the plan. Yep. Ring, ring. Lawton White and Gale speaking. Yeah, it's me. Alabaster. Awesome, interesting news today, Pops. That is? You are, um, along with a few other people funding... An initiative led by Alexander Griffin. 
Yes. They approached us not long after the incident at the Detroit Institute of Art. What does mom think? Well, you'd have to ask her. And what do you know about powered people? Well, I don't know a lot. I know that uh, that they're wreaking havoc. They seem to have no disregard for public safety in any way, shape, or form. And I know that that's bad for business. I think there's more to it than this, and I think it's a mistake for the Foundation to be involved. The Foundation isn't involved? This is you personally? Yes. I think it's a mistake for you to be involved. Well, it's a bit late for that. It's not too late. I've seen you pull out of deals at later stages in this. Son, what's your... Why... Why are you opposed? Dad, I've met some of these people. They're not what you think. And I know for a fact that even though the Bernstein brothers have done some good things, they're not great people. We can't judge public safety on whether someone is a good person. It's whether they are working for the good of others. Is there anything that might change your mind? I don't know that I can answer that question. None of us know what the future holds. The plan isn't just to go out and round them all up. This is, um, think of it like another arm of the police force that's capable of dealing with these miscreants. Not all miscreants, Dad. That's the point I'm trying to make. You are considering them guilty for having powers. Even if they've No, I'm not considering them guilty for having powers, Alabaster. I am considering them guilty for the murder of Raymond Bernstein, for the the destruction of multiple buildings, streets, the fear that they sow in the streets of Detroit. So it's just about keeping the money in the family. Is that what it is? No. No. Even though these people could be out helping, actually helping the people who live in Detroit, the poor people that live under the bridges, people that were abandoned by their fathers. There you go again. Alabaster, I have always appreciated the charitable way in which you have used your influence. You've learned well from myself, but especially your mother. This isn't an initiative against the downtrodden. This is to help protect them. They are being killed. They are being murdered. You've hardly probably even heard about it. There are close to 20 people. It's horrific. 20 of them murdered in Hoovervilles, obviously by some sort of powered person or people. We don't know. And now, Raymond Bernstein isn't even safe? The man lived in a guarded compound. I've never known you to be scared in my life. I hadn't been. I'm not scared for me. I'm scared for you. I'm scared for your mother. I'm scared for the city of Detroit. I'm scared for all of those people that cannot protect themselves in any way against something like the flying lion. King, right? That's what they call him. None of those people could stand in the street with that beast. I don't want to cause our family embarrassment, but I just want you to know that I can't support that position, and pretty soon it will probably come out that I may have had dealings with the Red One. What does that mean? Dealings. We should talk later. Alabaster. My love to mother. Alabaster. Goodbye, old man. And I hang up. Whoa. I take off my... Well, goddamn. I take off my mask. (laughs) And I walk back in the room. We're gone.
<laughs> King, King's already what, King's got Raymond by yep. the foot. They've already yep. flown We're over out, the Detroit. Bro. They've already flown over the Detroit River. They're in Windsor already, We're in, dude. We're getting north by the minute. Got us a flannel shirt and drinking a beer. <laughs> <laughs> Hanging out with Wolverine. That's funny. So Shadow walks into the room without his mask on. I knew it. I knew it was you. Yeah, you already he already told you. You already had all this discussion. I know, but there was still some doubt in my mind. Like it, it took me a minute to even buy it. Obviously, I've got trust issues. We're gonna have to fight this in a different way. I don't think that shadow can be very influential as a public figure. But I can be. Okay. Can I trust you both to keep my secret? Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, you hold the same secret over me. True. I will do what I can publicly to make sure that power people are not unfairly persecuted. I can go through society stealthily as well. If there's some thing you can do, connect me to, to get me in a room, to help me solve some problems as Cotton, I'm willing to do that as well. If you think of anything. Cotton, you've been seen with us too. Uh, at the bank robbery, you were seen bleeding all over the place. Yeah, but it's not like anybody has a picture. I'm just a regular-ass guy. Well, the people that are going to come asking questions are going to... I don't know that you're that safe. Maybe. Is the lake still pretty barren? Not many people? Oh. Yeah. The lake's pretty dead. What time of year is it? God damn it. Um, I wrote that shit down. It was uh, King or Cotton's birthday. Yeah, it's like late spring, early summer. Yeah. Uh, the families are up there. It's happening. It's busy. Certain parts of it, but there are long stretches of it that are not developed in any way. Right. That's probably around where we live, right? I mean, we wouldn't want neighbors, per se. You tell me. Yeah. We could go to the lake. Might just be a good place to lay low. We can move covertly between the lake, Love Shack, the upstairs room at um, the bar. We'll just get out of Dodge. What do you think, Cotton? I think we need to take action in some way that moves the needle. We've got to we got to bring this guy to justice if this is ever going to go away or we literally will be moving to Canada. Who are we bringing to justice? Yeah, we have no proof of anything. No, we got to figure out who's the head of the snake. I think Alexander Griffin is a good start. I can probably set up a meeting. Cotton, perhaps you can come with me as my associate. He can read them. And I'll scabooch. I'll go out to the lake. That's a great idea. No, I, I, I want you there. Um, perhaps you could be our driver, but the hat, the jacket, the glasses, you gotta be <laughs> you gotta be incognito at all times. Put on my Earthman costume. Put on your Earthman costume, that's right. Gotcha. That's right, Raymond. All right, I like that better than going to the lake. So do I need a new hat? Yes. Absolutely. Okay. Somebody's going to have to get in and see the, Roy the Haberdasher. Oh, wait, I still got keys, don't I? Yeah, you got keys, bro. Yeah, he's touring the world and buying me hats. He's out looking for the newest leathers. I'm concerned that uh, the newsboy hat I wear would be identifiable. You know, people have seen me wearing it before. Isn't that what a driver would okay. wear? That's what you wear when you're driving, right? Yeah, but I mean, I want to look like a driver. If, if I'm playing the part, I want to look like a driver. Okay. So so do we need to pause so you can go do some hat research real quick? Nope. Done and done. He looks like a driver. So what hat? So you're wearing a newsboy? Um, yeah, a different newsboy than the one I usually wear. <laughs> Works for me. It's like he's a brand new person. He's got a, a black tweed newsboy <laughs> instead of a gray tweed. 
newsboy. Yeah, yeah. That's amazing. Put on a different hat, pop my collar. Yep. We're on the road. Put on some black frame sunglasses. Yep. I wonder if uh, I wonder if we should go find this guy. Any idea where we can track him down and learn some more about him? With Alexander Griffin. Yeah. I can set up a meeting with him. Okay. You think the three of us should meet with him or should you meet with him? I think you and I should meet with him while Raymond waits for us. Stays in the car. With the dogs. Providing security detail in case things go wrong. Excellent. Let's do it. Set it up. Yep. So we just chilled the love shack. You go play Mr. Whitingale. All right, gentlemen. I've got a meeting set up with Alexander Griffin. I say oh, fantastic. we go in as friendlies. We try and see if we can infiltrate this organization from within. Oh, I think that's a great idea. Let's do it. Cotton, I'll have you be my associate. And Raymond, maybe you, you can drive for us. Be outside yep. in case something crazy goes down. In the vicinity. Did you just say you'll have me be your associate? Did I put it that way? I'd just like to be clear that I don't work for you, buddy. He's in alabaster mode. Forgive me, dear Cotton. <laughs> I may be a big dumb lion sometimes, but I am not your servant. That's fair. That's fair. I didn't mean to insult you. In fact, I, I need you because I, I, I really am hoping that you'll be able to do that thing where you read his emotions and sort of understand what his mental state is at or see if you can get information from him that, that I can't get to in normal conversation. Sounds good. What, what are we going to call Raymond? Mm. Oh, yeah, you need a name. What about Shimamino Diskowitz? I like it. Perfect. Shimamino. I love it. Yeah. Perfect. Awesome. Great. All right. Shimamino Diskowitz. Shimamino, uh, let's roll. Should should I build a background story? Oh, that's a good idea. Okay, so uh, you're rolling up? Yeah. Is Shimamino driving the Rolls Royce? Yeah, absolutely. But of course. Um, is Cotton Dearborn going incognito as well? Or I'm just going as me. Cotton's not been associated with this yet. Man. I mean, it might be worthy of using a different name, but. Sure. What What would you like to be called? I think. It cannot be Shimamino. Well, Shimamino Diskowitz is taken. <laughs> I <know>. Right. <laughs> I'm, th I'm thinking Cleary Mafumpkin. Dr. Cleary Mafumpkin. Dr. Dr. Cleary Mafumpkin. Mafumpkin. We got to remember these, Dr. Is that Scottish? <laughs> <laughs> Shit. Cleary Mafumpkin. Oh, uh, here it comes. Here it comes. All right. Oh, I feel oh. I feel I feel the headache coming. Here it comes. <laughs> Dr. Cleary McFumpkin. <laughs> You're accused of murder. You're trying to figure out, like, we're dealing with some deep ass subjects and Shimamino Diskowitz <laughs> and Dr. Cleary McFumpkin. Uh, I love that. Okay. <laughs> okay. I'm going to practice saying that while I'm driving. I've got to write this down. Oh, shit. Yes, you better. So you don't forget. Introduce yourself. He's going to forget anyway. What are you talking about? <laughs> it's why he gave King the forgetful, or no, is it, it's Cotton or King? I think it's Cotton that has forgetful as a, um, <laughs> oh, shit. Uh, the, are we at the office or does, yep. the, yes, or does please. Shimamino, Can we just, the Shimamino no, roll for no, the vehicles? Nope. He knows how to drive. <laughs> he knows how to drive. <laughs> nope. Roll for vehicles. I need to know what hat Raman is wearing. A black tweed um, newsboy. newsboy. Okay, okay. A new a new newsboy, that's right. Shimamino, yeah. please, please be a good yeah. sir and roll for vehicles. <laughs> ah. All right. Hey, we increased that, that roll, by the way. That one of our... So it's up to two dice now instead of just one? Yep. Two dice, baby. Four to two, rolling. Smoothest ride I've ever had on these streets. I gotta tell you, you've you've shown some real skill. 
with these vehicles. I've been practicing. I swore we talked off mic about how we were just going to go straight into the scene. (laughs) But of course, we've done that about six different times in episodes, and then we spend 11 minutes. (laughs) (laughs) Let's see. We're there. We're getting there. Dr. Cleary McFumpkin and Alabaster Reginald Whitingale in the backseat of the Rolls Royce, driven by Shimamano Diskowitz. Um, you took the meeting at City Hall, or did you arrange the meeting for somewhere else? We arranged uh, the meeting at a uh, local uh, restaurant for only the powerful, like a really exclusive place. We're all wanted. It's going to be, <laughs> that can't be a thing now. I'm not wanted. Oh, powerful is in wealthy. Powerful is in wealthy, yes. Oh, I hear you. I'm sorry. Influential. Influential people. You guys pull up to Martins. I think it's pronounced Martins. Yep, that's right. Martins. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you pull up to Martins and um, are greeted by the doorman. Raymond, you are, um, you drop them off, they pull around, you you get inside, you are at the table with Alexander Griffin. He stands as you approach. Mr. Whitingale. How are you? Uh, please, this is my colleague, Dr. Cleary McFumpkin. Dr. McFumpkin. It's Muffumpton. It's Muffumpton. Uh, I'm I, sorry. Part, I apologize. D- uh, Dr. Muffumpton. Nice to meet you. Pleasure to meet you as well. Um, I hope you don't mind. I already ordered wine for the table. Wonderful. Thank you. What year? It's, I believe, an 18. Wow. 1918? Yes. Oh, rather young wine. Thought maybe you meant cask from the 1800s. No bother. Uh, It's a lovely gesture. Thank you. Well, I mean, we can... We can send it back if you if you would prefer, Mr. Whitingale. I, um, I'm, I'm, I'm sure that you uh, are. I'm sure that you are much more versed in these things than I am. I just was um, attempting niceties. Forgive me. Uh, my my father is uh, uh, his his influence on me as an onophile is, uh, is is quite uh, strong. Perhaps uh, Doctor Mafumpton would like to sample the wine. Actually, uh, good men, I must apologize. I am a teetotaler. No judgments, though. Great. Shall we sit? Please. Alexander, may I call you Alexander? Of course. Alexander, I, I'm, I'm very interested in this task force that you've created. I understand that my... Well, I didn't create it necessarily. They've just named me as the commissioner. Sure, but this was a issue that was important to you already before you got into this role, was it not? I remember... Uh, yes, the safety of the people of Detroit is absolutely important to me. And and understanding uh, how the powered people play into that safety. Yes, of course. Of course. So, um, this task force that you've been appointed to, um, I know, for example, my, my father has a personal financial backing in it, and he and I have discussed this. Yes, which we're very grateful for. I'd like to know how I can can assist. Well, uh, what did you have in mind? Oh, I yield a certain amount of influence in the city. I would like to be able to help the task force achieve its goals. However, I'd like to know a little bit more about the task force, how you plan on releasing and, and, and I don't even know what the word is it instructing the the what are they called the guardians the the, the attendants uh, as a uh, branch of the police force as it were yes the guided urban attendant renaissance defense I thought it was rather clever using that acronym of guard I, I went through a whole list of different options and that one just really stuck. I feel like it had impact. You know? Yes, it's quite clever. Doctor, your opinion? It is it is quite clever. Uh, I I too am interested in learning more about the technology. And uh, what what is your specialty, uh, Dr. Mafumpton? 
I, I'm actually a proctologist. Uh, I don't, I'm not here really in my role as a doctor. Uh, I'm just here. Let's call me, let's call me, uh, <laughs> Alabaster's assistant. Alabaster's assistant. Oh, interesting. He must be paying you quite well. We have an agreement. Let's just say. I prefer to think of him as a colleague more than a, an assistant. He's brilliant. He has a brilliant mind, Alexander. He's he's one of the most uh, he's one of the, the most intelligent people I've ever met, and he has a real way of understanding what people's emotions are. It's, it's, it's an incredible thing. Interesting. He chose to be a proctologist with that. Hmm. Well, they say they say emotions come from the heart. Uh, it's clear I have seen them come from other places as well. I don't know that I want to ask any questions about that. Um, you're, you're interested in, in the workings of guard, but those, those mechanisms unto themselves are not directly handled by me. Those will be taken care of through a a structure of, of officers. I, I'm, I'm still, I mean, don't, don't get me wrong, Alabaster. I, I wasn't sure what this meeting was going to be about, but I'm still unclear as to what you want why you're here. If it's just fact-finding, I mean, it could have been done with a phone call. Why the face-to-face? Well, enough with the niceties, huh? Just jump right in. No no offense, Alabaster, but I am a busy man, and as are you. Of course. No need to play any games. All due respect. Apologize for the airs. I wasn't sure how you would take to this. You are part of a task force with many very wealthy and influential people. I would like to be on the inside of that team. If you catch my drift. You're looking to throw your hat in. What benefit would you bring, sir? This system's already in place. It's a it's a it's a public appointment. I mean, there there is talk of a citizen board of an independent oversight, but um, or a position in the public eye. I know how these things work in real life. My family's made a fortune off being on the inside of arrangements like this. Alexander, you asked me directly why I am here. Now you're the one playing. The game. Are you looking to make money? Money? Power? Influence? What else is there? I think I think you misunderstand the point of this. This is not about power. This is about serving, protecting. This is about getting rid of those people. If that's what you can call them. They are a menace. You don't believe that there are any good ones? I've yet to come across one. You don't believe that there are any useful ones? What are you implying, Mr. Whitingale? Mm. Guys, let's just cut to the chase. We came here because we want to be a part of that organization. I believe our interests are aligned, and we want to be able to bring some of these guys down as well. I will admit, the more of us working against them, the better. How can we be a part? Um, If our intentions are mutually aligned, it does make sense to put someone like you up for a suggested role within that citizen board. We would have to keep the arrangement incognito, of course. Well, perhaps we have a differing of opinion here. But I don't think that all of these powered people are completely without their uses. And I'd like, in the spirit of that incognito, to be able to create a team of people with powers whose ultimate goal is also mutually aligned. And he kind of looks right 
and looks left. Puts his elbows on the table and leans close. Then you've come to the right place, Mr. Whitingale. There's some technology that's being developed that will allow us a certain amount of control once these powered people are captured. And if that is your intent, you would make a good ally. He picks up his glass, takes a deep inhale of the wine, swirls it around, tastes it, tips the glass towards Alexander Griffin as if to toast, and says, I think we're in business together. And he lifts up his glass, reaches across the table and taps the rim of his wine glass on the side of your wine glass. Dr. Mafumpton, um, if you don't mind talking a little more business, I've had this hemorrhoid that has just been bothering me for weeks and weeks. Um, perhaps we could set up an appointment. I'll tell you, um, I will have my receptionist reach out to your people and we'll get it scheduled for later this week. I'll fit you in. Excellent. Thank you. I've, uh, I've hardly had the time, but, um, whew, let me tell you, it burns. It burns. Dr. Mafumpton pulls a glove out of his pocket and puts it on his right hand and says, we'll fit you in, or let's say we'll fit in you and snaps the glove on his wrist. Gross. <laughs> what? <laughs> way, to, way to go, Cotton. Way to use any power or do any fucking thing except snap a glove and make an appointment for a business you don't actually have. Great. Perfect. Oh, shit. And he's going to send everyone out there into the world thinking that uh, Alabaster Whitingale has to walk around with an asshole doctor. <laughs> Who wants to stick his hand in your ass? So oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> hey, everybody. Thank you for listening. My name is Duke Walter, your game master. Renaissance City is a Prowlers and Paragons Ultimate Edition actual play set in an alternate 1920s Detroit. It's a bit noir, a bit sci-fi, and a whole lot of fun. You can follow me on Twitter at Invisible Duke. The Scarlet Spartan is played by Dean Martin Jr. Cotton Dearborn and King are played by Chris Freedom. Saint Shadow is played by Jazz Abramowitz. You can find all of our content at ttrptheater.com. We have links to our YouTube page, our Twitter, Twitch, all of those things there. Thanks again for listening. Join us next time for more Renaissance City.
I was laughing so hard I was crying. When? <laughs> that old deal with Alexander Griffin. He's Just like, now? I ain't drinking this. Yeah, I ain't drinking this oh. swill. Oh, yeah. That, <laughs> yeah, that yeah, was the beginning I mean, of this. That was great. It's like, yeah, it's like it's like Hunter S. Thompson. <laughs> Why did oh. you bring your asshole doctor? Yeah. <laughs> what it, it, purpose is the asshole doctor? I don't was, understand the asshole doctor. <laughs> he's going back to the office. He's like, I had the weirdest meeting. You know, does Alabaster Whitingale have some sort of incontinence issues? Because he brought his fucking asshole doctor. <laughs> All right. I'm checking out again, but I was cracking up. I was crying. <laughs> it was a great power play. <laughs> fucking oh. five year old wine. I thought this shit came out of a castle. 